SAFM. SAFM. South Africa's news and information leader. ANC members found it very difficult to escape police surveillance after the Rivonia trial of Nelson Mandela and other leaders from uh, between 1963 and 1964. But white people from outside South Africa, being unknown and unsuspected, could move about freely to do things for the ANC. London recruits tells of the secret work they did, how they were recruited, and the activities in South Africa and neighboring countries their motives and how they feel about it in retrospect. The book is called London Recruits the Secret War Against Apartheid, edited by Ken Keeble, introduced by Ronnie Casuals and forward by Zed Ballo Jordan. Now, Ken Keeble and um, Bob Newland are in our Johannesburg studios. By the way, I'm doing this from Seapoint in Cape Town because um, I'm also covering the Cape Town Book Fair, which we'll talk about in uh, forthcoming problem, uh, programs. But, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Karabo. Good afternoon, Karabo. Hello, Ken. Hi. So you're doing this again on SFM. You were on on, on Thursday. Right, I think it was, yeah. Mm. Yes, and now you're back. Yep. How, 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 is, how has it been? Um, how have people well, responded uh, to, well, we, to your we, stories? Well, uh, tremendously. I mean, we've been to quite a lot of meetings, and when people, when we arrive at the meeting, people burst into song. It's just wonderful, actually. We've really? been re- received wonderfully, uh, wonderfully uh, by everybody, and particularly by Casato in the SACP. And we went to, we went to, uh, uh, and the ANC, we went to Soweto last night, and, uh, and, and others were there today. I wasn't there, and uh, took part in the uh, in a ce- local celebration or a commemoration of the uh, of the n- 1976 school students uprising, which is very moving. So uh, it's been a tremendous reception. Wonderful. Now you know, considering the, the timing, in is 100 years old. It's the 16th of June. It's Youth Month because you know. Um, Politically, they've taken one day, and now it's become this. You know, the, the month has been a focus on youth, and um, the majority of the voting, the voting public in South Africa is young. And Bob, when when I read your story, um, you first became involved in politics at school, and you were 14 years old, and a friend introduced you to the campaign for nuclear disarmament. I mean, you're 14 years old. Why aren't you worrying about your zits and girls? <laughs> well, you know, it was an amazing time then and lots of things were happening and changing and uh, one thing really followed from another. We we got involved in one thing and found out more about politics and then we found out about party politics and the world, uh, which we knew lot, little about uh, from school and, and that took us forward to become involved in the campaigns we became, in, became involved in, particularly the anti-apartheid movement, which was new and growing and really, really important to all of us there. But you, you, you've, got other, you've got other priorities, and you, you, you're, not, you know, you're not living in, in under, under, under oppression. So what is it that, that sort of drove you to care? You know, who, who, who taught you about justice oh. to the point where you decided that you're going to take part in achieving justice for others? It was an amazing journey with some extraordinary people. Michael Harrison, as I say, my friend at school, introduced me to the campaign for nuclear disarmament, but I had a very good friend in in the Liberal Party who who introduced me to wider international issues, and then communists who really showed me the world and gave me some solutions to the problems which we became very angry and concerned about but frustrated at not being able to to see how we could change those things the communists did that for us and i joined the young communist league and that then brought me to an international perspective that led me one step after another unbeknowingly to come to south africa and um, at one point, you know, you were 18, you were unemployed. It's, it's, it's those, those challenges that a lot of South African youth deal with right now. The majority of the unemployed are young people, are young men, actually. And how were you able to, you know, you know continue with, 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 with getting involved in the movements, you know, getting involved in the campaign at the London School of Economics for disinvestment from the then Rhodesia, uh, after you'd seen rallies um, involving the likes of Joshua Nkomo. But, you know, it, it's, you know, those values of, of, you know, choosing justice over what's going on in your own belly, being an unemployed young man. What do you think sort of led you in that direction instead of just, you know, getting a job and getting on with it? I mean, it's the late 60s in London. The jollies were partying then, you know what I mean? We, so, sorry. so so how? what do you think made you m- make those kinds of choices? 
Oh, that's a question I, I haven't even asked myself, to be honest. That's an extraordinary one. Um, I think we were parting. We had great fun, but, but we did it knowing that we needed something more from life than just fun. Uh, unemployment focuses the mind, but it's a, it can be a desperately sad and, and harmful experience. And um, so to do other things changes that and gave us an opportunity to become really actively involved in some things and and the anti-apartheid movement really did open our horizons i was able because of the kind of comrades like ronnie caseros and we'll talk a little, more, a little bit more about him in a minute i'm sure but mm. comrades like ronnie who who sacrificed in a way that none of us dreamed of who who gave us the opportunity to come here and, and support your struggle one which we were very committed to, to on an anti-racist uh, uh, perspective but then we were able to see in a much wider sense of, of liberation, independence, humans, human development. And uh, you, you've got to have something to keep you busy and active to prevent you becoming uh, dispirited when things are difficult. But being busy and active transforms you. It really does. And it was a fantastic time for us. This is Bob Newland. He is uh, one of the contributors to the book London Recruits. He was one of the London Recruits himself. Uh, this is the book about the secret war against apartheid, edited by Ken Keeble, whom, uh, with whom we're going to speak uh, just after this break. SAFM. SAFM. South Africa's news and information leader. You're listening to SAFM Literature. I'm Karabo Khuleng. Good afternoon to you. We're discussing London Recruits, the secret war against apartheid. Now, if you were following my tweets earlier this week um, when I received the book and, you know, got into it so that, you know, we, we would be able to have this conversation today, um, I, I did tweet some, you know, some, some, some short snippets from the book and what, what these guys were up to, what the story was. And um, if you'd like to look back on those, that would be really really fantastic and you can also call in on the program 0891104207 now the thing is with history is that it needs to be made alive and exciting for a new audience where you're competing for attention with a lot of things and uh, what 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 i found really striking about this book is that you know that there's a chapter titled exploding buckets where um, Ken Keeble writes about uh, the the leaflet bombs that, uh, that 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 you guys that you guys um, made and created, but but can can you tell us about you, you know your attraction to the anti-apartheid movement and why you decided to to engage yourself in in issues regarding justice in places as far away as South Africa? Well, it's because I, I was born into a communist family. And my parents were very, very internationalist and anti-imperialist. Mm. And the key point for me was not just the racism. Uh, it was that uh, the, 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 the people who oppress and exploit the British working class are the British capitalist class. And they're the same people that run the British Empire uh, that, that, uh, that uh, pursue a policy of imperialism. And they were up to their necks in the crime of apartheid. The, the, the apartheid system could not have survived without the support it received from the British government of the time, uh, from the city of London, from all the Brit big businesses uh, and the big financiers in, uh, in, in Britain. And so, uh, to me, it was all part of one international struggle. And my parents taught me at a very early age that the great error of the British working class was failure to make common cause with the colonial peoples and all the peoples fighting for their national liberation from British imperialism. That was what it was about for me. What about today? Because, you know, you, we've got this diamond jubilee and everyone's really excited that, you know, Elizabeth Windsor has been, you know, having the crown for 60 years. And I think about um, something that Churchill said, I think it was during World War II, and he said, you know, when, 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 the, when the colonized countries become free um, and history changes, the British Empire is going to be, you know, just fodder for entertainment and you know and, and the kinds of attitudes that prevail today uh, towards the British Empire w what do you make of them uh, well there's a te there's attempt going on now to uh, to whitewash the whole story and saying well British imperialism was better than French or Belgian imperialism or whatever and it wasn't so bad and it did a lot of good and so they were all I, messed I don't up. I don't swallow that stuff at all okay. I don't swallow that at all I think it was a crime it's a crime and a disgrace uh, I'm particularly conscious of the fact that uh, the uh, the first 
White's only parliament that was set up in, his, in South Africa in 1910 was the result of an act of parliament passed at Westminster by my own parliament, the South Africa Act 1909, which established a White's only parliament in South Africa, and that was only that was what made possible the apartheid laws. If there'd been non-white people in the in the parliament, they'd never have got the apartheid laws through, would you? So, so Britain is deeply involved in the whole thing. So for me, it was all part of the one fight. Do you think that fight is over? No, no, no. British imperialism still exists. The British Empire doesn't in name, but British imperialism still exists. Uh, the multimillionaires, tax-dodging multimillionaires who run the country where I live uh, still uh, have enormous power throughout the world. They still extract wealth uh, from, uh, from the former colonial peoples and, and the United States imperialism as well. That's why we have uh, AFRICOM, the United States setting up bases in Botswana and other parts of Africa to try to to ensure that the what suits the the multimillionaires is is what to hold sway. And you, Bob, do you do you think the the, the job is done, or do you, do you still have concerns about where 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 we're going, just as 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 humanity? Do you know it was an extraordinary experience yesterday to go to Soweto to the uh, the commemoration meeting at the Hector Peterson Memorial and really the timing couldn't have been better just by chance for us to be here and see the the opportunity that has been generated by the uh, ending of apartheid and the new democracy that you have uh, but clearly that democracy is only just and doesn't solve everything it just gives the possibility for the people to become engaged in struggle and to be able to take control of their future lives. So what we saw there was a tremendous number of young people and the older generation as well sharing in a very key moment of, of, of your struggle, um, but also sharing in a commitment, an expression of commitment to make things different and better. And we won't for a moment ignore the fact that our governments and our big businesses will continue to try to extract the wealth that they took through apartheid in other ways. So both you and we have a common cause together. Just quickly on the royal family, you know, I'm not going to comment in detail about the royal family as such, but it's an anachronism. Mm. You have a democracy, you elect your president, you elect your government, and that's the thing that has flowed from the success of your struggle to date. We have a royal family. The Queen might have been there 60 years. That royal family and its predecessors have been there for generations after generations no one elected them it's not democracy and i think that you can offer us tremendous examples through your uh, work and and, and, and struggles uh, that we can share uh, to to show that there are other ways of doing things than, than than britain and other colonial powers have done in the past now the the 76 um, the 76 protest which was a non-violent protest by children as young as eight years old was about bad education. And today, we're still dealing with that, 36 years later. And this issue of bad education, it's also, it's, it's a global thing. And, you know, what do you think can young people need to do to try and take ownership of their situation, where we say, look, the, the, there are certain gains that have been made in, you know, in, in favor of justice or in the pursuit of justice, but there are still a lot of things that are unfair. What do we do about it now? Because we've got these political rights, we've got constitutional rights, but when those rights are not realized and they're still being, you know, the majority of young people are still being incredibly deprived. Uh, we're at the Cape Town Book Fair and these are the conversations we're having where we're talking about levels of literacy, how incredibly low they are, how people don't have access to books and to libraries and it, 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 how do how do we how do we take take a leaf from you guys's book as as the generation that precedes us that, that that made these gains for us so that we could go forward what do what do you think we need to take in order to you know continue this fight for justice because we're not there yet no no, no one is no one is there yet there's always more work to be done uh, i i think this book is a, a is a, a, a great contribution to history it's a primary source for historians and uh, if anybody wants to change the world if anyone is not satisfied with society as it is and i'm not and they want to change the world as i do uh, they've got to study history you've got to study the history of, of how we got to be where we are you've got to study the history of those people who tried to improve society in the past see where they went right and where they went wrong and learn the lessons. Otherwise, we just uh, we just make the same mistakes all over again. You can, spend, you can spend your whole life making mistakes that somebody before you has already made and already proved was a dead end. So 
we need to study our history and that's a, this book is a contribution to that i think history is a revolutionary subject a revolutionary subject that's my belief and uh, uh, I would I would urge all, everybody to understand to study history, including of course the history of education, uh, uh, and that we, we those those people who who, uh, in, who fought in the the uprising of 1976 thought education was very very important. They were right. Let's take calls 0891104207. You're listening to SAFM Literature. I'm Karabo Khaleng. We're discussing. London recruits the secret war against apartheid with Ken Keeble, who's the editor, who took pains to go and find as many of the London recruits as possible, who told their stories themselves, and um, they were, of course, were recruited by uh, Ronnie Casuals, and um, the 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 guys were taking care of intelligence outside of South Africa after the Rivonia trialists uh, were put to jail and. Um, the, the apartheid government became really, really hardcore against liberation movements. 0891104207 is our line. We're taking calls. The lines are open. Your SMS is 34701. We're also in conversation with uh, Bob Newland, who was one of the recruits as well. And uh, you can hear the stories of them. You can read the stories of them and others in this book. Uh, let's go to the lines now and hear from Billy in Midrand. Good afternoon. Boy, oh boy, I just had to pull over and, and I hope you can hear me. It's a bit of a bad line. We can uh, hear you loud I don't and clear. Know, I don't know exactly the topic, so forgive me if I'm off topic, but with the uh, comment that the gentleman said about the royal family could not be truer. It is so true. We need to be educated, never mind uh, the mainstream so-called education system. We need to look at democracy and, and see who's behind it. Because whoever gets elected in a dem democracy, it's like uh, two wolves and one sheep uh, deciding on what's for lunch. But in a true democracy, which is not mob rule, you've got the sheep with a gun. And we need to get rid of these royal families and these uh, Ashkenazi Zionist bankers that are running the place. Sure. Oh, please. No, no anti-Semitism, please. You know, with there's people in this country, I didn't quite catch that remark there. I said no anti-Semitism. There's people in this country that are wide awake to this. And we thank people and praise people like this gentleman that's on the air talking this stuff. Because it's not... It's not popular and it's not stuff that people want to hear but i praise you i take my hat off to you man okay thank you billy uh, billy has uh, takes issue with uh, the zionist uh, movement uh, in israel so um that that's 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 a whole other can of worms and you know what we're going to have a conversation about anti-semitism uh, with andrew brown in the next just after half an hour uh, in a book uh, that he's written called solace that, that that deals with that particular issue but i mean how how do you think that we're going in the right direction? Where do you see pockets of, you know, thinkers and, and movements that you believe are going in the right direction? Because everybody wants to have, you know, have a fair deal in life. But where, where do you think, you know, people need to go? Which, which ideas do you rate um, um, after you respond to what Billy had to say? And I'll begin with you, Bob. Okay. Um, I do want to say that to talk about... Ashkenazi, to talk about Jews as opposed to political movements is a terrible error because we came into this campaign, we supported your struggle because it was to defeat a racist system and to create something different and, and South Africa stands in the world as a demonstration of a multiracial society dedicated to reconciling all of those historical differences and still providing opportunity for their people and that we continue to commit and all of the forces in South Africa whoever they are that commit to that we will continue to try to find ways to express our support for I think that's probably the best way of doing it obviously we're communists we may know the secret of that and we see the communist party as a key player but th that is not our message our message is get involved young people get involved we did when we were young we made a contribution make yours take ownership of your life your your society fight your battles and we'll you know and you will get support for that ken uh, well i i really uh, wanted to talk about the book i, d I do object to the anti-semitism i heard in that little remark but that's uh, that's uh, as I do, i'm anti-zionist but i'm not in any way anti-jewish at all okay. um but uh, that's not what i really come to talk about i really wanted to talk about this book which has got some wonderful stories in it i myself came to uh, south africa in in uh, 1968 and i posted 1200 letters uh which were from dr yusuf dadu to the members of the Indian community in South Africa, uh, giving them a message of hope and uh, and uh, and showing them that the uh, the ANC was not defeated by the Ravonia trial. I came again in 1970 
with, with my comrade Pete Smith and we went to Durban and we set off some leaflet bombs there uh, 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 around the, uh, the railway station and the bus station where crowds of black people were uh, coming on their way home for, from work and we set off a, a, broadcast, a street broadcast in the street um, with some songs and speeches recorded in London. Uh, the London recruits did think similar things to that uh, at least once a year, every year from 1967 to 71. Uh, and I think that's a, a remarkable thing, and it, it filled in a gap in a time when the, the ANC was all either in jail or in exile. And so uh, they hit upon the idea of recruiting white people in London who were prepared to, uh, who were not known to the regime because they were not South African. And that's the point, and that's the point of the book, really. What I tried to do in, in compiling this book was to track down all the people who had done something similar to what I had done, ask them to write their own story, and so each chapter is written by a different person telling their own story in their own way. And that's why it's very interesting. It's got many different angles to it and why it's a primary source for historians. Yeah, no, th th that indeed. It's just that you already discussed the book on Thursday afternoon, so I, I didn't see. know. I don't know how I was going to sort of. You well, know, I, I, had to, I had to change my my my, my so tact with. It's uh, just that I don't want to come here and lecture people about what they should do in their own country. <laughs> uh, I, I I feel that's, uh, that they can uh, work that out for themselves. I'm sure they're capable of doing so. All right, then let's hear from Joe in Durban. Good afternoon. Hi, hi good afternoon. Uh, uh, when you introduced the subject, you said everyone's excited about the jubilee. And I'd like to perhaps your guest to comment with the background of that statement. And I'd like to, I'd beg to differ. You know, if, if, if you ask the vast majority of 50 million people in South Africa, I don't think, you know, the vast majority even knew or could care less, except that, and, and this is my question, um, if, if the SABC and our corporate media then flood us with stories, not only about the Jubilee and every little uh, small thing that the, the princes do and everything else, and, and, and this sort of bubblegum that keeps away the deeper questions, um, you know, and you know, and I mean, we get, you know, SABC, for example, will advertise days of our lives 25 times a day, and then and then we talk about Youth Day and Black culture and 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 how we progress on a Black consciousness movement. Um, given that and what we've seen with News Corp and Murdoch, I'd like to guess perhaps to talk about about how that and 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 because you've brought up anti-Semitism and Zionism, even if you look at the coverage on the Middle East and Syria and Libya and Iraq before that, Joe, how the popularization Joe? of media has affected the, 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 our outlook on the world. Okay, Joe, we have run out of time, unfortunately. But what is your take on the questions that you've asked? Are you a, Do you have any answers to those questions yourself? Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I think um, our, our media feeds us bubblegum so that we became ignorant and, and, and slowly our rights are being eroded. Okay, thanks we, a lot. We, but you know what? Really this, going on. All right, but this book is not bubblegum, so I'd, I'd recommend that you read it because it is history that has been brought to life and uh, that shows you that there are broader struggles across the world where international solidarity does 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 work, and this is what London Recruits is all about. Thank you for your call. Gentlemen, unfortunately, I have to wrap this conversation. Thank you for joining us uh, in, in, in the studio once again. And uh, those um, that's Ken Keeble. He's editor of London Recruits. And uh, Bob Newland is uh, one of the contributors to this book. And you can read the stories of um, various internationalists who decided uh, that they were going to take up a, a just cause to try and uh, see liberation happen in South Africa. It, uh, all the proceeds go to the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund. And it's got a foreword from Zed Balo Jordan. Thank you so much for joining us on this. Thank you, Carabo. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. And uh, yes, you can get that book. It is published uh, by Merlin. I think it's distributed locally by uh, Jakarta Media, and it retails for around two hundred rand. Around two hundred rand. Around two hundred rand. Around two hundred rand.